we bring a list of iconic actors who passed away today, April 8, 2024. Legends who somehow contributed to their respective works and today unfortunately ended up passing away. Condolences to the family and fans, rest in peace. But first, we ask that you show your love and affection by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel to follow us. Monday of Morning It happens that the renowned and very well-loved 87-year-old singer Clarence Frogman Henry passed away this morning, April 8. The veteran singer was one of the best-known R&B singers from the old days of New Orleans and had success at the age of 19 with the song, Ain't Got No Home. According to information from his family, the musician died this morning, however, the causes of his death were not reported. Henry, who was scheduled to perform at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival later this month, imitated the voice of a frog on Ain't Got No Home. It was a hit in 1956 and later brought Henry renewed fame when he appeared on the Forrest Gump and Mickey Blue Eyes soundtracks. Henry, who was born in New Orleans on March 19, 1937, began playing the piano at age 8, taking lessons that his sister disliked. He worked for his father until he was 15, often without money. He played trombone and piano in his high school band and later joined the Toppers, touring South Louisiana before becoming famous. In 1958, Henry's popularity waned and he began playing nightclubs on Bourbon Street. But in 1960, a new song, I Don't Know Why But I Do, by Cajun composer Bobby Charles and arranged by Alan Toussaint, brought Henry renewed success. With the Bill Black combo and the Jive Five, he opened 18 shows for the Beatles in 1964, during their first trip to the United States, and toured extensively from Scotland to New Zealand. Henry's national fame faded, but he remained popular in Louisiana. He was a fixture on Bourbon Street until 1981, when he retired from the grueling club circuit but he never gave up on music and continued to please audiences annually at the Jazz and Heritage Festival. Really very sad. We send sincere condolences to friends, fans, and family. Rest in peace. Another sad death was confirmed this Monday morning. It turns out that the BC Vice Governor, Iona Campagnolo, has died away at the age of 91. Before becoming Lieutenant Governor, Campagnolo had a career in broadcasting in Prince Rupert and was an elected trustee on the local school board. In 1966, she was elected councillor to Prince Rupert City Council. In 1973, she was inducted into the Order of Canada as a member for her extensive services in organizing, promoting and conducting community projects in Prince Rupert, British Columbia. Campagnolo was appointed BC's 27th Lieutenant Governor in 2001, the first woman to hold the position. She remained in the position until September 30, 2007. After this she turned to federal politics and was elected to the House of Commons in 1974 as a Liberal MP for the then riding of Skeena. Following her stint as Lieutenant Governor, she was elevated to Officer of the Order of Canada in 2008. At the Prince Rupert District Chamber of Commerce Business Awards on April 6, Elder Clarence Nelson Sr. paid personal tribute to Campagnolo during the traditional welcome to the TSM Sion territory. Really sitting. She was very loved and will forever be remembered. Rest in peace. Unfortunately, we started this Monday with a sad death. 
It happens that the renowned former minister of Jean Charest's Quebec Liberal government, Benoit Pelletier, died this morning, on April 1st, at the age of 63. The information of his death was announced and confirmed by his family, however, the cause of death was not reported. In a statement released Monday morning, Pelletier's family mourned the passing of a loving husband, a devoted family man, a funny, generous and thoughtful listener and a great lover of Quebec and the French language. The renowned law professor made the leap into active politics in 1998, when he was elected in the riding of Chaplot, in the Utah Way region, where he taught at the University of Ottawa, one of his alma mater. Pelletier was the chairman of the Liberal Party's Special Committee on the Political and Constitutional Future of Quebec and is considered the father of the Charest government's constitutional platform. Considered a Quebec Federalist Nationalist, Pelletier was a supporter of asymmetric federalism and fought against fiscal imbalance and for limits on Ottawa's purchasing power. He also played a key role in the creation of the Federation Council which brought together all provincial and territorial leaders in its negotiations with Ottawa. Pelletier is survived by his wife Daniela Goulet and their four children, Florence, Francoise, Jean-Christophe and Mathilde. Really sitting. We send sincere condolences to friends, fans and family. May he rest in peace. Unfortunately, the renowned artist, Tim McGovern, passed away this Sunday, March 31st, at the age of 68. He became very well known for his work on Total Recall. Who confirmed the news of his death was his wife. Tim McGovern won a Special Achievement Oscar for his work on the visual effects of the 1990 sci-fi classic Total Recall has passed away, his wife Rena Nagandi said on social media. He was 68 years old, reportedly. Based on Philip K. Dick's We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, Paul Verhoeven's Total Recall, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, has the visual effects pioneer serving as CGI director. The creative effects employed as Schwarzenegger's Quaid and others undergo a sort of X-ray security check, exposing their bones, were part of McGovern's work on the film. McGovern began his career in the early days of computer-based digital visual effects, including work on the groundbreaking 1982 film Tron while working at Robert Abel and Associates. He later joined Sony Pictures Imageworks as a founding member, where he served as Senior Visual Effects Supervisor and Senior Vice President of Creative and Technical Affairs. His work at Imageworks included films such as Last Action Hero and The Ghost and the Darkness. Most recently, he worked at the DNEG studio, earning credits on films such as Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, The Huntsman, Winter's War, among others. His death is sorry. Rest in peace warrior. We just received a sad death. It happens that the 64-year-old voice actor, Mark Dodson, passed away on this Monday morning, March 4th. He became very known on the television scene for his roles in the 80s film Star Wars, Return of the Jedi and Gremlins. Dodson's representative, Peter DeLorme, later confirmed his death. Mark has worked on dozens of films, video games, commercials and advertisements, adding his unique voice and sound to every character and script he has touched, the stellar appearances post read. Mark leaves behind a wonderful family, close friends and passionate fans around the world. The family asks for privacy during this difficult time, he regrets. Despite his sad death, the cause was not reported. 
Dodson made his Star Wars debut in 1983, playing the character Salacious Crom in Star Wars, Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. He reprised the role in 2022 in the video game Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga. Dodson returned to the Star Wars film franchise in 2015 when she played the role of Nima Scavenger in Star Wars, Episode 7, The Force Awakens, starring Daisy Ridley, John Boyega and Oscar Isaac. In addition to film and television, Dodson has also lent his voice acting talents to several video games, including 2010's Star Trek Online, 2016's Grim Dawn, 2018's Lucius III, 2020's Ghost Runner and Ghost Runner 2. From 2023, his death is sorry. The voice actor was very loved and will always be remembered. Rest in peace, warrior. Unfortunately, the 78-year-old guitarist, David Lindley, passed away this Monday afternoon. The information was confirmed by his family on social media. The famous musician was known for working with a range of artists in the 1970s and 1980s. Some of his most notorious collaborators include Jackson Brown, Linda Ronstadt, among others. Despite his sad death, the cause of death was not reported. His most notable work was developed as a member of the studio band The Section, cited by Rolling Stone magazine as responsible for shaping the sound of soft rock in the 1970s. The partnership with Jackson Brown was the most extensive. He played with the musician during most of the 1970s, which also established him outside the Hired Guns universe. Lindley also had his own bands, such as El Rio X and Kaleidoscope, and mastered a number of string instruments, such as guitar, acoustic guitar, violin, electric bass, double bass, banjo, lap steel guitar, mandolin, buzuki, sistre, ukulele, among many others. Very sad. The musician was very loved, and will definitely be missed so much. We send condolences to friends, fans, and family. Rest in peace.